Hi folks, welcome back to Teardown Tuesday, and today we're looking at probably the last episode of 2022. There were a couple of these that didn't really go as planned, especially in the beginning when I was still trying to figure out what sequence to follow, and some of those are not salvageable or not really even relevant. There were some parts that were torn apart that were really just too far gone. You, they were so damaged you couldn't see how they worked anymore. Uh, but one of the parts that I started doing a teardown on I thought was really interesting and that part ended up being a really kind of poor quality teardown because I didn't know how it worked at the end. I couldn't figure it out. So here's the part, or what's left of it. This is an oil quality sensor from a fryer and you can see it's, it's torn apart. This particular part came out of a fryer. It was taken out of service for whatever reason. There was no information with it as to why it was taken out of service, but it was a used part. And I tore it apart and I couldn't figure out how it worked. So I did some more research on it, found the patents that were related to it, and now we'll talk more about it. This was one of the first, and we'll make it the last one of 2022. Come along as we take it apart, and then when you come back, we'll talk about what I've learned about how it works. Uh, today we've got something really interesting, and this is one that I've wanted to tear apart for a while and see how it works. I believe this is a fry oil quality sensor. Uh, in Europe, in particular, there are legal standards on fry oil quality, so these sensors were developed a while ago, and they're starting to see them in the U.S as health concerns get broader in terms of fry oil quality. So if this is what I think it is, the fry oil would be pumped through this device and this device would return a signal on a particulate in the oil. Now if we look at how it's put together, there's threaded connections on the side and on the end and it looks like this was machined as a single piece and then this was TIG welded on. And then there's a connection on the end. There's two connectors and a spade terminal. And so we know we've got quite a bit of wiring going on. We've got quite a bit of something happening here. It looks like the wire colors might partially duplicate between the two plugs. But either way, we've got some interesting stuff going on here. So let's see what we can get apart. First thing we'll do is take apart the, the cable clamp here. And there's four Phillips screws that hold this retaining plate on. Let's get those out. And you can see down inside there's, there's some kind of screen or filter or control mechanism. It's not entirely clear what's going on down in here, but there is something in there. So we've got a printed circuit board. The printed circuit board has wire soldered to it coming up out of the sensing mechanism, but then it's also got wire soldered, soldered to it coming in from our, our cable. Let's start to separate this apart, right? So and that separates our housing and board. So now we've got the actual sensing mechanism. And looking at how this goes together, I think what I'll have to do is probably put it in a vise and work this spanner nut back. Uh, probably in this case with a, a chisel and a hammer to get that loose. So it didn't take much to get this spanner loose. Just a couple taps. This one wasn't super tight. But this ring now, we're going to spin this ring out. And you can see I'm just spinning it out with my finger. So now we've got this lock ring out. So there's our mounting plate. You can see the little grounding fingers there. And there was an O-ring seal. Let's pop that off. So now let's see if we can start to work out this inner assembly.
so we have finally gotten this worked loose. I, that's kind of a bear to get in there. I, I wonder how they put this thing together at the factory without damaging it. Because that's, that's a very difficult to retain that. All right, so now let's try and work this cap out. Might even be able to push the entire assembly up and out now. Yeah, so that was it. So I took this drift punch and ran this drift punch down through the center here. And this thing is almost like a rivet, it feels like. All right, so here's what we've got inside. An oil control. And this thing is oily. So there's a central cylinder here. You can see there's some debris stuck in this. So somebody ran this without filter paper at some point. So the oil is moving through this in a way that it's creating flow down across this part of the device. So there were wires that came up out of here. And we can try and cut this apart, but I don't know how much success we'll have. I am assuming this is a temperature sensor that's making sure that, that we have the correct oil temperature as this thing is operating. Yeah, so it looks like the correct way to take this apart would have been to pound this assembly out first. We'll, we'll come back to this because I kind of want to cut it apart and see what's inside it. So now, down inside here, we've got a barrel with a screen and some wires. Well, let's see what we have to do to get that out. Ah, interesting. So this uh, yellow tape is called Kapton tape, and it's high temperature adhesive tape. And then there's a very small sensor down inside there. Not sure what it's sensing. And then we've got another Another very precisely machined ring. This was down inside of that. Filter or screen assembly down in the very bottom. That may or may not come out. I might have to tap that out with a hammer. Let's try that. I'll hit it with a drift punch here and see if we can tap it out. So I think I got it knocked loose. See if I can get it the rest of the way out of there now. There we go. All right. Wow. So now we've just got this very precisely machined stainless cylinder. So we had this sitting like this on the outlet. We had this down the middle. Then we had this device sitting like that, sealed into the base. Had this device sitting over it, going around. And then we had this, which we can pull that out. We had this going over the top of the whole thing and sealing it all back together. Interesting assembly. So we had wires coming out of here. We've got a, some kind of sensor on here got something going on. This, this wire appears to just be soldered to this metal casing. So when we look at the flow path, with this being sealed down into the center like that, we just had a very precise relationship between these two metal objects and the oil was being forced to flow in between them. The way that the, the surfaces are finished, I wonder if this just measured resistance of the oil like electrical resistance of the oil. So we've got this wire soldered to the outside of that casing. We've got this wire soldered to the inside of this casing. I bet they're just measuring temperature and resistance on the oil and, and running it against a, a known table. And this really looks like a, a thermocouple. I wonder if we hook a meter up to it, if that will give us a, a temperature reading. Let's see if we can get this cut open though. I'm, I'm curious to see what's inside this. 
So the first pass, I went after it with an angle grinder, and it's just a solid piece of metal at this end. So now we'll cut it apart up at this end and see what's going on up there. We know there's something inside it, we just don't know what or where. Alright, so coming at it from the other end, we've we found the channel the wires run in, but it's not entirely clear what they're doing in there. If that's a temperature probe, it's it's so deep inside the metal that it would take a long time to respond to changes in temperature. So it may just be an electrical connection to the, the metal itself. The, the metal itself was isolated from every, every other metallic part of this device. It was insulated through these adapters. So it may have just been electrified. I'll take one more pass at it, but I don't think we're going to learn too much more from this. So I did some angled cuts just to see how deep this goes, and it looks like it goes pretty far down into the end of the, the probe here. And I don't think we're going to get too much else out of this. Alright, so you saw from the teardown, got it apart, did some cutting, didn't really figure out how it worked. What I learned from reading the patents is this device basically turns the oil from the fryer into an oil-filled capacitor. So what this device does is it captures a sample of oil from the fryer and it turns this body into a, an oil-filled capacitor. And it measures the capacitance of the oil, which changes depending on how much debris is in it. Figuring out how it works took a little while, and reading the patents helped quite a bit, but it's dependent on temperature, first of all, so the oil has to be hot enough to be within the temperature range that the controller can recognize, and so there's thermocouples integrated into this. You can see some of these on parts like this barrel. There was a sensor probe that went down the middle that, was, that had a thermocouple inside it as well, but I cut it up trying to figure out what was in it, so there's not much of it left now. And using the, the electrified barrel and sleeve, along with knowing the temperature of the oil and electrifying the, the sleeves, you can figure out the capacitance value of the oil. And they do that over here in this very complicated control card. One interesting thing to note here, these little devices are very similar to what you see in laminar flow faucets or water fountain nozzles. And I think what they were doing here was using the complex shapes of these to straighten out the oil flow and prevent it from cavitating as it was flowing through the system. And you saw the way it went together, but basically we had an inlet and an outlet. And the oil flowed down through the middle. And then we had our little sleeve down inside. As far as how this device can fail, failure on this device is not easy to see, and, and I don't know why this particular one failed, but I did find debris stuck in the, the flow port here in the little flow nozzle. Clean oil and dirty oil with lots of solids or fats or particulates in it have different capacitance values, and what the sensor is doing is actually picking up the difference in the capacitance values between that clean oil and and the dirty oil with all of the other stuff in with it. So it looks like one of the ways you could get this to fail would be to get debris in here and clog the holes in these nozzles. The other failures that I would see would be any failure of the, the very, very hair-thin wiring or the thermocouples that are inside here or any of the electronics that are on the card. Kitchens can be a very difficult environment, and you can see they gasketed this, and they used seals where they could, but you're still in a very harsh environment. It's very possible you could get damage to the electronics. But this, as a, as a device, is very well made. It's very well put together. It's probably not an inexpensive part to replace, so hopefully they don't fail very often. So I think that'll do it. This will be the last teardown of 2022. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. 
I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.